Okay, so in this video, we'll be discussing about webhook alert action in Splunk. Okay, so if you remember from my previous video, we talked about how we can send email from Splunk alert, right? And while doing that, we used this demo underscore alert, right? If I just go to my search app, so this demo alert, we have used it over here, which was using this particular search string where it is looking for the error events only in the Splunk D log, right? And it was polling for last five minutes. And it was also creating a uh, new field called mail underscore ID using a regular expression, right? So, and it was running every three minutes. And whenever my results are greater than two, in that time I was alerting it, right? And that time we were using the email action. Now, this, this particular errors are generated by another alert which we set up as email error, error generating alert, which was basically trying to send an email to a wrong email ID. So that's why those error events are getting generated in Splunk. Okay. So I have enabled this particular alert. Okay. So that my error, error events are getting, will be generated every minute. So now I will be going to my search and reporting app to update the alert action now okay so before we choose to update the alert action uh, let us understand what webhook actually is okay so for that i have created this diagram okay so if you see whenever we talked about api right so there is a server where all the apis apis are uh, setting up site right? so and we have a lot of clients which are basically polling this uh, calling this particular api for a particular interval okay just to get the some some of the records it wanted for its own processing right now webhook you can think about just opposite of api now uh, the use case could be like um, let's say uh, i have a database which maintains the some certain status right some transaction status or something status right now if a client which is polling the api for every five minutes Okay, it may happen that the status may not change for for next five minutes or next 10 minutes. Okay, maybe it is changing every half an hour or something like that. But the client has been configured to pull it for every five minutes. So that means whenever in, in between this half an hour, the client may not get the proper response because of this one, right? Because the status is not changing frequently, right? So in that case, we generally use webhook because api calling it will be it will be because those calls it the status will be written the same status again and again instead of that we can uh, we can implement some uh, functionality like webhook where the server will be pushing a message to the client saying that okay my status has been changed now you you do whatever this is the current status you do whatever you want with it okay so that's why we may think of webhook as a reverse api in API, clients pull the server in frequent interval just to get some data. Okay. Now it may happen that the underlying data is not changing very frequently. In that case, API call will always give you the same status again and again. But instead of that, we can implement in, in this way as well. Whenever an event happened or status change happened, server will notify the client using webhook. Okay. So it's similar to some kind of push notification we can see in our mobile phones or something like that right now if you heard about this guy i'll show you here uh, there is a good service called if triple t okay now they use webhook uh, very frequently so it's it's an interesting service where uh, people can create applets like get an email when a google new google assistant applet is published or get a notification email with a recommended applet every day or it may happen you can basically configure this applets with your iot devices as well let's say i am using a smart bulb right so whenever i'm entering my home or my room the bulb should turn on so you can achieve those kind of functionality using this guy over here so there are a lot of applets you can do so I would recommend check out this particular website. You can do a lot of cool stuff over here. Okay. So these things are using 
wave hook very extensively so the the way the functionality works is if something happens take this particular action okay so 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 we talked briefly about wave hook the basic concept okay so let us do one thing mm, we will be configuring our alert to send an wave hook now for today's demo what we will do is we will take a dummy website okay so there are a lot of webhook testing website you can get i will be working on webhook.site today okay so if you see here is the unique url it has created just now for me okay so that means this particular website will always be listening to this web through this particular url okay so whenever i am sending something to this url it will post it over here if you see waiting for the first request over here it will post something over here the payload basically okay so i'll be copying this url i'll be going to my splunk here i'll be removing the email notification now i'll be going to the webhook notification and now webhook is always a post request basically right from server to client side so i'll be giving the url just now i copied over here okay webhook.site link i'll be clicking on save done now i will enable this particular alert okay so now whenever this alert fires it should send a post request to this guy over here and this guy will be displaying the web load it has sent okay now for splunk web web hook if you see the my alert just now fired okay and multiple times it fired right so it is sending me all those uh, all those full payloads over here if you see the underscore internal uh, the index name the timing okay server host source everything every information whatever or the result information everything it is sending as a payload to this particular url as this particular url is always listening so it's it it is displaying over here okay now for splunk webhook okay so for splunk webhook we have to remember one thing is this payload structure right this payload structure is always fixed from splunk so you cannot modify it okay so this is the one thing we should remember now for webhook now now think about the use case over here right suppose you are listening to a chat room right so if something comes up you can send a webhook alert to the chat room so something will pop up in the chat message that things you can achieve through webhooks okay so it is the so you can say it is up to the client how it will handle this particular web webhook result set or the payload okay so this is how this is how the splunk webhook alert works okay so as i as i have done for each and every result i think right for each result that's why this many is alert has been sent and as i as i discussed in my previous video you can trigger only once as well okay so similar kind of stuff even throttling also is not really not dependent on webhook action so throttling as we discussed before it, it can achieve well in the same kind of way as well whatever we have discussed in our video on schedule alert okay so in the next video we'll be talking about real time alert okay see you in next video